Whether you're using Windows, Linux or Mac, these are my top 10 ways to get Microsoft Office legally either for free or the best free alternatives to Office, including two bonus ways of getting it for much cheaper than the full recommended retail price. Roll the intro. Hey name tags, welcome. This is Ash from Hilmai Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. On this channel, we do repairs, reviews, and tutorials of tech, including sharing entrepreneur tips and strategies to help you unleash your true potential. In the description below, you will find timestamps for your convenience if you want to skip ahead to specific parts of the video, but I would be grateful if you watched the whole video at least the first time. Okay, so this video comes as a need because many of my clients usually ask me to get them a copy of Microsoft Office. They usually want the latest one. And uh, the bad news is if you want a full featured latest version of Microsoft Office, or you need specific features of specific versions of Office, then you will need to get yourself a legal full licensed copy from Microsoft or their partners. However, the good news is most people don't need that. And uh, I'm gonna share with you many alternatives including getting Office for free from Microsoft themselves. I don't condone piracy. There is no need for it anymore. So these are the legal ways. It is not clickbait. So let's do this. My first two recommendations are actually online versions, starting with my number one recommendation, and that's Microsoft's own free Office online version. You're going to need an Outlook or a live account, one of the Microsoft's uh, email account. And I've just done one this morning uh, called healmytech at outlook.com just to show you. So I'm gonna put links to everything I'm talking about below. And it's quite easy to set up an account. What many people don't know, if you've got an Outlook or a live account, there's actually a free online version of the office. So you go to the left and you click on this little icon there and down is going to pop a few options. And as you can see, there's a mail, calendar, people, OneDrive, task. But the second row, you've actually got Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, Sway. And obviously you've got further Microsoft related products like Skype, Docs, etc. And we're going to test one of these on today. Now, do remember, this does need online internet connection. So let's go with Word. And uh, once you click on it, you're going to be presented with this interface. And uh, we're going to just start a new blank document. Right. So do bear in mind, you need a decent internet connection. And also, I would advise that you upgrade to an SSD to make you the process much faster and much easier for yourself. On older computers with a slow internet, with a normal hard drive, you may find that this option for online may not be such a good idea. All right, it's asking me to get an extension for Chrome. I'm not going to do this just yet. That's up to you if you want to do that. As you can see, you've got quite some basic uh, tabs up there and uh, most of the options. And I'm gonna just um, type something new. So this is the free online version of Office from Microsoft, right? Okay, so, and you can do basic editing with this. So I'm gonna just make that bold and uh, let's just change the font to maybe 20. Let's just change its Arial already right now, I think it's Times New Roman. There you go. So very, fairly um, easy to do. Okay, now let's see how to actually save this. And you've got a few options here, right? So the number one option, if you click on File, you can actually save as. The first option is to save a copy to OneDrive, and that's gonna keep it in your OneDrive account. And uh, you can pick your folders. I'm gonna pick Documents and leave it there. I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna name it as, let's call it uh, Test One Office free so we can locate it later okay and click save now this is going to save a copy online for you in the OneDrive account and this is now accessible from anywhere so the second way you can actually save this as well is you click on file and you go save as and obviously you can rename this file if you want to it will rename it in the on OneDrive account, but you can also download a copy to your computer, a local copy. So when you do that, just click on download and your document is ready for download. Click on that. And once it's downloaded, you can go to your downloads folder or you can just click on show folder and it's here, test one office free. I'm gonna open it. 
Now, to open this, you will need a local application uh, to be able to open a Word document, which is going to be in the next options in this tutorial. Okay, All right. But the point is, is you can actually save a local copy to your hard drive. Now, third option you can use to save this. If you go to File and Save As. You can actually convert this to a PDF version. So let's click on PDF and again it's going to convert it and ask you to download. So let's do that. And once it's ready, show in folder. And now we've got the PDF version, which is Acrobat Reader. And we can click on that. Again, you're going to need to have installed Adobe on your local computer to be able to open this locally. But you could also do this online. Right. And uh, last but not least, I think. You can also save as a copy. You can download a local file as ODT, which is open document text. And we're going to do that. And ODT is the default version for a different free alternative for Office, which is going to come to later. But we're going to leave it as a. And uh, let's just open it. This is now ODT. And you can see it says open document text here, 5 kilobyte. And again, there you go with open all free versions. So the pros for this method is it's accessible from anywhere because all you need is a browser and an internet connection. Second thing is it's cross-platform because it actually bypasses the platform whether it's Windows, Linux or uh, Mac because you're going to be using this through an online browser. Third pro is it's actually compatible with all previous versions of Office, old or new, in theory, as far as I know. But if you have any specific issues, you're going to have to contact Microsoft. And uh, obviously, being able to save it onto the OneDrive, it's, it's, it's a plus because you can, again, access this from anywhere in the world. So the main con, obviously, is going to be the fact that you need an internet connection and you need decent speed because otherwise it might slow your workflow. And also, I would advise if you're going to be using um, internet uh, and decent speed, you need to update to or upgrade to an SSD to make the whole process faster. Okay, so that was the Word version. But as you can see, you also have Excel and PowerPoint and OneNote uh, online versions so you could also open the Excel and it will work exactly the same way um, all the basic features all these options I'm giving you are ideal for anything general you want to do in Word document or in another type of office processing so exactly same format just at the reduced feature content okay so moving on to option number two and that's nothing more than our popular Google Docs link below so Google Docs you're gonna need a Google account or a Gmail account and this works exactly like Microsoft Office in terms of how it's going to be online you need internet access and you need to be able to um, have decent speed and also an SSD would be very recommended but you got Docs sheets slides and forms which is the equivalent for um, uh, documents um, Excel and PowerPoint. I'm not sure about forms. I don't use that, but I'm sure you can look it up. Now, same thing. Let's go to Google Docs. And it's the same interface, more or less. We open a new document. This is option two from Google called Google Docs. I, oops, I'm not a great typer, as you can see. Right, and again, you can, you know, um, let's uh, underline this and let's change the font if I know how to do this. Uh, I, don't, I don't really use this much, but and uh, we'll change to Bree Serif. There you go. And we're going to save this pretty much the same way. Um, first of all, you can actually just share this straight and uh, you can uh, call it um, Google Docs Test. And you can share it through an email. You can send someone, or you can also get a shareable link. And uh, you can also add some comments and edit it, and, you can, and people can view it. So that's one option. Now, we're not going to do that. What I'm going to do is save a copy. And uh, same thing, you can make a copy, or you can download as. And there you go, you've got some options here. Microsoft Word, open document format, ODT comes back again, like we mentioned earlier. Rich text format, PDF format, plain text, etc. You can choose a few of them. Let's do Microsoft Word. And again, it's downloading a copy for you. And uh, that will open 
on your local drive similar to what we've done earlier let's hopefully let's open there you go on our local drive but you do need an application for them okay that's option number two as i said similar to google sim, sorry similar to office there is versions for um, google excel which is called sheets or slides which is for powerpoint okay great and again this is cross-platform so all the same pros and cons like office all right so these were the two main online versions the rest of the options I'm going to talk about are all offline meaning you can actually install an application on your computer and it will be there you don't need an online uh, internet connection option number three and this is the one that I have been using and as a matter of fact this is the one I've just used to do the script for this uh, tutorial and this is called LibreOffice LibreOffice is the default office alternative application that you can find when you install many distributions of Linux for example Mint or Ubuntu and uh, I've already downloaded this one I believe this is cross-platform so there's an option for v Windows Linux or even Mac I think this is the Mac version the default version is a uh, compatible with both Windows and Linux so you can go ahead and download it it's quite easy to do okay so once you've downloaded and installed it you're going to be presented with this interface and on the left you have a writer document a calc spreadsheet which is for Excel impress which is PowerPoint and draw which is like paint and math formula etc you got a few things you can just um, you know check them out so we're going to do a writer document so documents similarly so this is LibreOffice default oops default app for Linux right okay and again change fonts change you know whatever the heck and we're gonna save that and this is a local version so it's on your computer you don't need to save this online now the first time you're going to save it's going to ask you to save as the default which is called ODF text document we came up with this earlier in the last two applications so this is what they were talking about uh, open text document it is the default so you may want to do this so I'm going to show you let's do this let's do LibreOffice free okay so if you save as is it's going to save as a ODT document and you go to your folder there you go LibreOffice free and we open it up again there we have it so uh, LibreOffice okay it's as ODT however I'm going to show you what you can do um, if you want to save as a Microsoft Office document this will open in Microsoft Office Word in theory again I uh, haven't had any issue with it but you may want to do this one instead when you say save as don't leave it by default ODT format you just click on here and go down and select Microsoft Word 2007, 2010, and 2013 XML.docx. Okay, select that, press save. It's going to ask you to confirm this document may contain some formatting. What that means is obviously because it's an alternative, it's not the full featured Office, so you will have certain features which is not present it's not the same and uh, you may find that some of the things some of the editing you've done may not be appearing or some of the you know little tweaks here and there but for the most part if you're just doing general word processing it should be fine even tables so you can select this use Microsoft Word 2007 okay and that should be fine now it's now if you go back to um, our folder you can see there's two of them there is the first one which we did earlier is open document text and then the next one is a Microsoft Word document we've just saved as right now if you don't want to do this every single time I'm going to show you how you can change it in the properties so let's go back to LibreOffice what you can do is go to file no sorry it's go to tools and go down to options and in options you're going to go down to load and save and in I think it's in general yeah and here you have the default file format and ODF settings right one when not saving in ODF or default format and what you want to do is always save as 
select down the menu and select Microsoft Word 2007, 2010, and 2013, right? And select OK. Now, what that's going to do from now on, when you're going to save, it's going to save directly as a Microsoft Word document. So let's see. This is a Microsoft. Oops. I don't know how to type. Word document from Lib Office. Oh, but this is cringy. Let's just change that. Okay. And uh, if I click save as this time, or even save, now as you can see down here, it's already selecting the Microsoft Word XML format version. So you're good to go. Or you need to give it a title. So this is called LibreOffice Microsoft. And we save it. And if we go to our folder again, and LibreOffice Microsoft, there you go. It has a Word document. Okay, so you're good to go. Right. So these ones I use all the time, the first top three. The next one, option number four. Okay, so these first three apps I use all the time, the first two online, and this last one is a local application. So option number four is something called Apache Open Office, which I have used in the past. And uh, it's cross-platform, there is a version for Windows Linux, and uh, this link here is a version for Mac. So it works almost exactly the same as LibreOffice. Again, a local application, not an online version, right? Moving on to number five is something called WPS Office. And uh, I've been told, I have not used this one personally. If there is time, I'm gonna actually try to download this one at the end of the video, just to have a go at it. But it has decent reviews. And uh, if you've come from a Microsoft Office environment, this is probably the best one to feel at home because the interface is quite similar. The default version is compatible with Linux and Windows, and down here you have selection for also an iOS version, and even for Android, so all good to go. So moving on to option number six, it is S-Suite Office Premium HD Plus. Now this is the paid version, but this link will take you to a free version, and again you can see there is a Windows, Mac, and Linux, and an Android version. So I have not used this, but the reviews are quite good. I'm sure all the ones I'm going to be mentioning, which I have not used, you will find lots of reviews and tutorials on how to use them fully. So do some research and you should be fine. But if any problem, do get back in touch with me and leave me a comment below. So I probably will try to do a full tutorial on each of them. Moving on, option number seven is something called Free Office from SoftMaker. Little drawback to be able to activate this, you will need to request for a license to activate it, but it's well worth it. Uh, only draw, only other drawback is there is no Mac version for this one, but it works fine for Windows and Linux. As far as I know, there's no Mac version. Maybe at the time that you watch this, there might be one. I'm not sure. Someone do correct me if I'm mistaken. Okay, so which leads me to option eight, and if you are on Mac, then I work on iOS works wonders. These were the absolute free versions, which I recommend to you. Now, the, the next two are gonna be paid versions, but they're gonna be a cheap alternative to the full recommended retail price. So the first one I would ask you to do is to contact your university, college, or employer. Usually, many companies have a deal with Microsoft that they can get the full license at a reduced price. So whatever you're working, you need to just check. This website is for students. Um, there are some colleges also that do that scheme and many employers do. Like I said, just get in touch with your employers or your college or university or even check with Microsoft themselves directly, right? So you should be able to get a rebate. However, uh, like for example, Office 365, I believe you have uh, some uh, deals to last only until you finish the studies or until as long as you're employed with the employer. Some of them, they might have like a three-year activation period from the time of activation or from whatever time. You just have to check these small prints. And the last option, which is a paid version, but for cheaper, is to buy a license 
from an online retailer like eBay, like Amazon, and there's plenty others, you can Google them. However, I do have to caution you, not everything on eBay and Amazon is gonna be genuine, even though you may type something like Microsoft Office license genuine, now you're gonna to have to do some checks on the seller. Also make sure that wherever you're buying it from has a decent return guarantee policy that you're covered. For example, look at this one, this is Office 2010 Professional, and it's coming at about 20 pounds, but I've seen them go for as little as five pounds, even one pound, which you need to be really wary of because it sounds too good to be true. But gen generally, uh, I have not bought from these. Um, I have bought Windows license like that, but not Microsoft Office. But I do hear some people do get lucky just to research. Okay, so those were my top 10 ways to get Microsoft Office either for free or alternatives for free. Now for the bonus option that there are unused license of uh, Office on previous computers or laptops that you may be able to buy. Now, granted, there are some conditions about the sales of licenses, which you need to check with Microsoft Office themselves. Or, you know, but a lot of people just, you know, it's kind of a gray area. Um, what, what I mean is if you buy an older laptop with a Windows, pre-installed on it and it had an office that's 2010 there's a chance that you'll be able to reuse that office license to be able to install it somewhere else do bear in mind though I'm gonna show you um, I have been using office 2010 for a while but lately um, what's happened is this I've actually upgraded my RAM to 16 gigabyte but every time now that Microsoft wants me to reactivate this product and uh, I will try to activate over the internet. Well, I've tried to do it on the phone, but unfortunately for this specific 2010 version, it's the home edition version, I'm sorry, it's the home and student version, it no, they no longer support that kind of activation. So I will need to try activate it online. It's just a silly thing and you need to get in touch with Microsoft for this because every time you make some hardware changes to your computer on Windows 10, I think if it's on Windows 7, you're still good to go, but I'm not sure. But on Windows 10, every time you make hardware changes, sometimes Microsoft will be asking you to reactivate certain things just do bear that in mind that's the end of today's video couple of final notes before the outro this video was not sponsored you will find show notes and links to everything i've talked about in the description below and in the cards above any affiliate link to sites like amazon or ebay is clearly identified and if you click them and follow through with the purchase it will not cost you anything extra and you will help the channel with a small kickback so it's a win-win for everyone one more thing, if you want to ask a question, please be as specific as possible, including all the relevant details. You can check out this video, which I did called The Art of Asking the Wrong Question, where I address this very common problem so we can help each other out without getting frustrated and wasting time. That's it for today, folks. Like, dislike, share this vid and comment below. And if you found the content helpful, consider subscribing to help the channel and keep you notified of future videos. Once again, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for watching. This was Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.